Hey, what's up, bubs? Welcome to The Basic Concept. In this video, I'll be discussing several habits and routines that can help you save money fast, even on low income. Some of these habits can keep you living paycheck to paycheck and with some slight changes can save you a lot of money. They're not really in any order except for the top three, which in my opinion are must know and must do. Please help and support the channel by hitting the like button, the subscribe button, the notification button, and any other buttons that you might find below, as it does help the channel grow. Thank you, and let's get right into it. Number 10, tire pressure. Yep, you heard it right. According to Road and Track, properly inflated tires can increase your fuel economy by 3.3%. Now, although that seems um, like a small percentage, but for the average driver in the U.S., that's approximately $200 a year. Not to mention other issues your car might have if you don't have your tires properly inflated. Pretty easy to do. Most gas stations will have a machine that will do this for about $0.25. Cents. So no reason not to do it. Number 9. Energy drinks. According to Reuters, 5.5% of the U.S. population between the age of 20 and 39 consume at least one energy drink per day. That's a lot of people. Now, not only are these packed with more than normal amounts of caffeine, but they're also packed with tons and tons of sugar or sugar substitutes. On top of that, they cost an average of about $2 per can. That's about $700 a year on something most medical professionals advise not to do. Number eight, cable TV. Aside from not being able to use the time to empower yourself and learn new things, cable TV companies do charge you a lot of money for the few channels that you watch. And they make it seem like it's a great deal by advertising like 200 plus channels for $39.99. Well, services like Netflix, Amazon Prime, and even Hulu will give you those shows and more for a lot less money. Not to mention services like YouTube that has a lot of the same entertainment and education for $0. I also find it funny when they bundle more services that no one uses and state even higher savings. Something similar to that is number seven, subscription services. While there's plenty of things wrong with subscription-based services, I'm talking about the unused subscriptions specifically. A friend of mine who has been watching my channel downloaded the Mint app. After using it for about a month, he realized that he has been paying for a subscription at $19.99 a month for the past 14 months. Aside from the continuous charging whether you're using the service or not, a lot of the times you may not even realize that we are paying for the same service at multiple companies. For example, Prime Music and Apple Music at the same time. Number six, buying brand name products. Now this one does have two sides to it. For example, when you buy the expensive brands, you are literally wasting your money for the logo. More often than not, you can buy the same product for much, much cheaper. And often, you don't even have to do much work to find it either. Usually, the stores uh, will have these off-brand products inches away from where you can buy the brand name ones, sometimes even saving up to 50%. Clothing and clothing accessories are the worst ones when it comes to this. For example, a Nike t-shirt is upwards of $60. You can find the same exact material at Old Navy, for example, at about one-sixth of the price. The other side of that um, is kind of the exact opposite. Buying non-brand names can sometimes cost you more in the long run. For example, I bought several cheap laptops um, during when I was a little bit younger. They all ended up having issues, multiple issues. After I bought about five or six, um, I decided to invest in a MacBook Pro instead. I have not had to buy a new laptop since that time. So even though the computer cost me more upfront, it has actually saved me money by not having to buy a new one every six to eight months. Number five, buying in bulk. This one also has two sides to it. Uh, most businesses that sell or use any products of any kind buy them in bulk to keep the cost down. We should do the same on things that we buy. For example, razor blades. Buying a 4-pack every month is significantly more expensive than buying a 12-pack or even a bigger one once every few months. Similarly, if you're a tea or a coffee drinker, you can often buy a bulk package for much, much cheaper. Even little savings can add up really quickly. 
On the other side of this, you shouldn't buy things in bulk that have an expiration date because most likely you will throw them away costing you way more than you would have saved. Number four, credit cards. This is yet another one with two sides to it. Credit card debt that accures interest is bad, obviously. It's very easy to get caught up in this, um, but it's also very easy to stay away from it if you start at the beginning and never let them charge you any interest. Basically, buy what you can afford and pay it before the end of the month. On the good side of credit cards, you can buy things that you would buy anyways and get rewarded for doing so. I do have a video on my channel that goes over this in a little bit more detail. I'll link that video in the comments uh, section below if you want to check it out. Number three, having too much money in the bank. Now, most people associate having a big bank balance as a sign of wealth. Unfortunately, the government prints more money every year. By doing so, it reduces the buying power of our dollar by about 2-3% to every year. That's called inflation, and it affects everyone equally. So leaving your money in the bank is actually costing you at least 2% of buying power per year. To avoid this, look for some banks that actually pay you an actual percentage of interest instead of a sub-percentage. For example, most of the big banks pay you 0.025% interest per year. Now, some small banks pay an actual percentage. Like Ally Bank, I think, gives you 2.05% um, interest per, per year. Again, not a big yield, but it's protecting your money against inflation. Number two, not having an emergency fund. Pretty much anyone you talk to about money will tell you that you need to have three to six months of your salary set aside as an emergency fund. This will simply prepare you for the unexpected events. Put it in a high interest savings account like Ally Bank and try not to spend it. If you don't have this and something unexpected comes up, you will have no choice but to use that credit card, which will most likely cost you a lot more money in interest rates. And finally, number one, budgeting. This is the easiest and the simplest change you can make to your routine that can help you save the most amount of money. For me, this was a single best eye opener, being able to see where I'm wasting my money, where I can do a little better, and what I need to avoid completely. Now again, I do have a little bit more detailed video on this topic. Um, if you wanna check it out, I'll leave that in the comment section below. That video goes over a few different methods for budgeting, some tips and tricks, and my personal examples. In short, you need to budget to be able to save more money or invest it. Let me know what you think of the video in the comments section below. Please help and support the channel by hitting the like button, the subscribe button, the notification button, and any other buttons that you might find below, as it does help the channel grow. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.